Hello, my name is Sergio Garcia. Uh, many of you don't know me because we're not very close in this class or we don't talk much, but I'd like to talk to you today about traditional learning versus e-learning. Now me, as a college student myself, I had the opportunity and the privilege to take one online class alongside two classroom classes a semester. And I wanna share with you today the pros and cons of traditional learning and e-learning and what I personally think about it and what you can learn from it or how it might help you or put you at a disadvantage. So the purpose of knowing about this is online learning has been pushed heavily through the global pandemic that we are currently in the midst of. So with this, uh, with the global pandemic, I personally was my senior year. It was 2020, I was in my senior year and we had to cut school and we got pushed to online and Zoom classroom learning. So with the Zoom classroom learning, uh, it was very unmotivating, especially when you're in a classroom and you just get switched automatically. So this, this honestly had a dramatic push and students not wanting to go to class or maybe missing attendance. Well, I'll touch on later on in the presentation. Um, but this doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing. It just means that it came at a bad time. This doesn't mean that we were never gonna move to online learning or maybe push toward that uh, transition. Because as you all might know, technology is getting pushed heavier and heavier every day with upgrades and new innovations becoming more readily available. So I would like to go over the options for different types of students, depending if you are lazy, if you're motivated, how hard you work, if you have a lazy work ethic. It's good to know who you are and which classes might be best for you. So the pros of online learning. There are many pros to online learning. My favorite one, of course, is your own schedule. Me personally, right now, I am taking classes. I work part-time at Planet Fitness, and I am able to fit in online class whenever I want. I personally have an online class that I have assignments due Tuesday and Thursday, and I usually have tests that last about, have an availability about three days. So I get time to do it whenever. I can literally wake up in the morning, hop out of bed, go straight to class, or work on my material, or work on homework that I might have to do uh, the next day or the next week. And I can work at my own pace anytime that I want. There's no limit to, uh, Depending on the class, there's no limit to if I can go more forward or backwards. But in my personal experience, uh, the class that I had, I was able to go as much as forward as I wanted, or I was able to stay alongside the classroom learner. Uh, it is very cost effective. Um, if when you go to university, there are meal plans, you have to pay for your dorm, and you have to pay for other things as well, you know, because you don't just live just off of college, you also have to go out and do other things. Uh, the very the cost effective side of online learning is that you don't have to have a meal plan, you don't have to live at a dorm, and you don't have to do anything. Uh, that's under the assumption that you do live with uh, somebody, or maybe you don't have to pay rent or bills. That's under the assumption that it would be cost effective then. Uh, also, it has increased network opportunity. If you really take the time to look back and look at the big picture and the concepts of how far online has pushed our interaction and communications between people, we're not supposed to know this many people as we know right now. In all honesty, um, locally, locally and going to colleges or maybe you might meet 30 people or you might meet 500 people, but out of those 500 people, you might not stay in contact with them and you might not be able to remember who they are when name to faces. But with technology, you can put down their contact information you book so that way you have a picture with their name and the face, their email address and their number. So you're able to communicate with them and not only that, but if they have mutual friends or maybe a connection, you are able to talk to them and get more opportunities as well. Some of the cons of online learning is this is a type of tech requirement, so this goes more toward, uh, I would say older people, I don't mean to offend anybody, but toward older people, they do struggle a little bit, a little bit with uh, the tech requirements. Uh, according to a study from uh, the comparative of Oh no, I'm sorry. According to a study from the technology advancement of online learning, e-learning, and uh, uh, virtual learning, it actually states that uh, a lot of people do have more trouble with the, um, technology, whether that be poor internet connection, electricity, or as getting it to work. You know, because uh, a lot of people, not everybody can afford the latest technology, so not everybody can have the fastest internet or the fastest start of it. They might have some delays or they might be lagging, or maybe they have a poor camera, a poor quality mic. So also another con of this is you have to have a high motivation drive because if you do not have a high motivation drive, nobody's gonna tell you to go to class. Nobody's gonna tell you to do your work. Nobody's gonna tell you to do anything at all. You have to make yourself, you have to make sure that you'll be able to do it. And in my personal experience, honestly, I'm, I, you have to admit to yourself and I'm admitting to myself, I do not have that drive. I do not have that self-discipline. I do not wanna get out in the morning and work on my material. I do not wanna get out in the morning and work on my homework. I do not wanna get up in the morning and have to work on a test. I personally do not have that drive. So my personal experience, I don't like online learning. 
So for everybody, it's different. This doesn't make it a bad thing. Another thing is possible distractions at home. This might be if you live with someone, maybe someone's uh, bugging you or nagging you, you know, they're causing a distraction. Or even your phone, your video games, your TV, something just to take your way attention from what the task you are doing. Maybe you don't want to do it, so you're looking for an easy excuse and an easy, simple way to get out of it. So some of the pros of traditional learning actually is a distraction-free environment. Just like as we're in a classroom right now, we're all paying attention to the speech and we're paying attention to Ms. Mack whenever she's talking. You also have hands-on learning, which might be better for you. Uh, they, they like to talk about a concept and the comparative study of online learning versus traditional learning by Porter P. Um, he talks about hands-on learning in there. And the hands-on learning in there is more people actually prefer hands-on learning because a lot of people like being able to see or touch or like see the concept of what they're learning rather than just reading words and not actually understanding the concept. Because with hands-on learning, you also get to see people talk and their interactions, which moves on to my next point, individual interactions with the teacher. So after class, maybe you have a question or something, maybe you didn't get the exact concept of what you were learning that day in class, or maybe you have questions about an assignment. After that class, you could talk to the teacher, you know, when she asks for your time, or you could talk to her beforehand, or you could even ask, uh, ask questions during class. This, unfortunately, is not very available with online learning. There is like glitches and technical issues, and sometimes uh, uh, the teachers won't have time because they make the schedule straight from when the class starts to when the class ends. Some of the uh, cons is the schedule is not as flexible. If you do have, um, if you do take in-person classroom and traditional learning, uh, you won't be able to just go whenever you want or do your homework whenever you want. There's a certain time that you have to come. Me personally, I have algebra in the morning, so I have to be here at 10.50 to 12.05. And in that one, personally, I don't get penalized for missing any of the classes, but I have taken a class in, in person where I did get penalized if I missed anything. And usually the limit uh, that I've experienced is about two absences, and then you start to get penalized. Another con is commuting, the commuting in class. You have to drive, you have to drive, and that takes up a lot of time of your day. Versus if I was at home, I could just relax, pop open my laptop, and start getting to work. But then, if I'm in person, I have to drive. Uh, the higher cost of it, of course, like I was saying earlier, if you have a meal plan, uh, you're in college or anything like that, you know, you go to in-person uh, classroom, you have to pay for a meal plan, dorm, all that. That just depends on your situation. There could be a higher cost. And it can also possibly hurt your grade. Like I was saying, for the attendance, you can't be penalized on that. So let's say maybe one day you're sick, you can't go to class, you're penalized. The other day, maybe you have a family emergency, you're penalized, you know? Depending on the teacher, whether it's strict or not, you could be penalized and it could possibly hurt your grade. Uh, these are actually some statistics here on hotel management courses. And the reason I picked this research uh, of a comparative study between online learning versus traditional learning, the reason I picked this one actually is because I like why they picked these courses of hotel management courses. They picked this one specifically because it has a bunch of hands-on learning, which is great because, like I was saying earlier, when the pandemic came, a lot of students were transitioned from in-classroom learning straight to online learning. And that's what they were experimenting here. It's because it's more of a, a hands-on kind of class so how would they succeed whenever it gets switched to online and they can't see it in person, they have to read just material or even have virtual learning. So as you can see here, this is Texas, 76.8 students prefer classroom learning. As you can see right here, my keyword here is prefer. Prefer, prefer, prefer. And the reason why it's preferred is because all this is simply bias. It's simply what you wanna do and what you think is better for you. And 23.2% prefer online learning and there are 87 of students underserved better in classrooms. And this statistics comes from um, an adaptive learning of uh, online and virtual classroom. And also it comes from uh, uh, my other source earlier, which is comparative study of traditional learning versus online learning. Um, as you can see here, what I like to point out is none of these statistics say that any of this is wrong. It doesn't say that it doesn't say that it is better to learn in the classroom or that it is better to learn online. It just says what the students prefer and what they said they understood better. You have to understand that this comes in a sample size and this sample size is a select group and it's not just everybody. So with that being said, uh, I like to say that there's no right or wrong answer. There's no right or wrong answer for what uh, class you can choose. Um, sorry, about that. I lost track. Okay. okay. So with that being said, I think to succeed in any classroom, you have to be honest with yourself.
you have to be honest with yourself. Am I a person that is highly motivated? Am I a person that has a strict work ethic? Am I a person that can get this done on time? Am I a person that will force myself to be the best possible version of me? Or are you a person that's laid back? Not that there's anything wrong with that, because I'm a laid back person. Am I a person that gets my stuff done on time, but I'm, I'm, I'm lax with it? I watch shows while I'm doing my homework. I text people while I'm doing my homework. And you just have to see which class is better suited for you. So, as you can see, I have some pictures here. This is from Graphing Statistics. Do you face students attendance at home with virtual teaching methods? Yes, they do. There's a lot of people that skip out on classes while they are virtual learning or while they have online classes because they don't want to go, which is why it's very important to be strict with yourself if you're going to do that. And also, I thought this was very interesting right here. Uh, when people were rating the feedback or the effectiveness of class and learning, none of them had rated it a one, uh, on a scale from one to five, none of them rated it on a one at all. So as you can see there, to somewhat of a degree, it works. Another one is that most students prefer classroom learning than online learning. Uh, I do as well, too. Other than that, I would like to thank y'all for listening to me talk today, and I hope y'all have a great day.